This is Aaron Murakami with the uh, uh, Bedini Lindemann 2013 conference. Uh, basically, I was the primary coordinator for the uh, for the event up in Hayden, Idaho, which we just had this weekend, and we had a handful of speakers. And uh, sitting with me here is the uh, legendary Eric Dollard, who was uh, kind enough to come up, and he gave a, a two-hour presentation at the end, which followed with, up with about a half an hour of uh, uh, questions, and uh, and so. Um, as many of you know who's been following Eric's work, there's a, a whole compendium of, uh, you know, articles and research papers and schematics, you know, how-to stuff, theory stuff that Eric has been sharing and uh, people like David Webster and John Polakowski has been uh, 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 helpful by kind of organizing that and typing it up on the forum so everybody can read that. And uh, if you want to follow and learn more about Eric's work, there are three different fr uh, threads at energeticforum.com. Uh, there's one called Whatever Happened to Eric Dollard. The second thread is Eric P. Dollard. And then the third thread is Eric Dollard. Um, they all kind of go in sequence. The reason there's three threads is there was a few issues with a couple of them, so I had to lock them just to kind of preserve them so none of the information disappeared. And so right now there is an Eric Dollard thread, and that is live and active. Uh, Eric still participates in that and uh, little by little um, a lot of the work is going to be compiled and organized under energysciencefoam.com. Um, at the conference this weekend in Hayden which was uh, extremely successful I mean we just heard so many rave reviews about you know literally every single speaker uh, everybody was in love with the topics uh, there's a lot of conversations uh, a lot of good social networking time you know, in between the break time and after the conference was over on all three days. And so, um, as part of the agenda on the last day before Eric's talk, there was going to be a uh, discussion panel uh, with all the speakers moderated by Jean Manning, who is the author of Breakthrough Power. And uh, we'll give links to her website so you can follow up on her blog and, and see some of the articles and some of the work she's involved in. And so, with the schedule that we had, we were kind of we slammed. and. Uh, so we weren't able to do the discussion panel at the conference. So what, I've been, what I'm doing is collecting the questions from different people directed generally to any of the speakers. And some of the questions are directed uh, directly to Eric. And so what I'm going to do is uh, take time to uh, uh, get these questions answered and interview each of the speakers um, if they happen to be here in the local area, you know, at least for the moment. And the ones who are going to be out of town, such as Jim Murray, I'll have to do something probably over the phone. And so you can look for uh, follow-up interviews with the other uh, uh, speakers of the conference, like Jim Murray, uh, Peter Lindemann, um, Paul Babcock, and, and so forth, uh, later. And they'll all be in a series on uh, either YouTube or somewhere, but I'll make the links available. Um, so first of all, um, do you have any comments or anything that you want to talk about? Uh, as far as the conferences involved in, in your lecture, which was... Uh, well, you probably should point out, uh, you know, you brought up the thing about the book. You probably should explain that, you know, okay. it was a hurried effort and... Uh, yeah. And you, like you did on the previous tape. Okay. So with, um, with, with Eric's talk, um, uh, the title of the talk was the uh, uh, symbolic representation of electricity or the four, four quadrant uh, representation of electricity based on Eric's four quadrant theory that if you've been following Eric's work, you know about his four quadrant theory, but um, chances are you may not know what it means or may not understand it. Um, there's some old books or uh, papers written uh, back in the uh, Borderland days, which was kind of intended for, you know, PhDs and people who have, uh, you know, pretty advanced understanding in electrical engineering anyway. And so um, when we're putting together this conference and uh, Eric was invited to be uh, one of the speakers, um, kind of had a brainstorm to, um, well actually in Energetic Forum we kind of took a survey to see what most people wanted to learn about and it was the, the, the four quadrant theory. And before the conference there wasn't really like a layman's guide or something that kind of followed through all the history on, you know, the, the path that Eric took mathematically to, to arrive at his four quadrant theory. And so the purpose of this talk was to kind of bridge the gap between the layman and, and his theory even though it, it the intent was to get a little bit heavy into the mathematics towards the end, but start with uh, a very metaphysical background, you know, starting with Pythagoras and looking at the history of mathematics and how it all kind of ties in. And uh, so Eric didn't have a whole lot of time to be able to pre prepare uh, his whole presentation how he wanted. 
Um, the, pr the presentation on the slideshow presentation was about two hours, it was about half an hour of questions that followed up. But throughout the process of Eric putting together that presentation, he had uh, written l literally about 500 pages of notes to be able to compile that talk and still wasn't able to get all the information into the presentation he wanted. So, so there was uh, a good handful of slides going into the math and stuff that he, was, he had to skip over just because of the time, uh, the time limit that we had to work with. And so um, besides the video presentation, there will be a book uh, coming out in the near future when Eric has time to, uh, uh, to go back down south and uh, work on his book. That may take a couple months to compile it, and that will be a companion book to the video presentation. So you have the full, well-rounded um, uh, presentation along with the math and deeper explanations on it. So if you missed anything in the presentation or didn't understand it, uh, Eric will have gone in, into pretty complete detail in the book, so that will be coming out. And uh, when Eric's uh, four-quadrant um, theory presentation that he had at the conference comes out, it will be available at fourquadranttheory.com. Uh, four is spelled out, F-O-U-R, quadranttheory.com. Uh, not only will the video presentation be there first, but when the book is available, it'll be on that same website. And so... Um, Besides that, should I just go into a few of the questions yeah. and stuff? And I didn't really have time to look over all these questions, so I'll just uh, go ahead and read them out, and Eric can just uh, go ahead and answer. Um, let's see. Okay, here's one. This is basically j directed to everyone, so I'll be, I'll be asking all the speakers uh, this particular question. So, uh, and I don't know who these came from. They didn't write, write their names. But the first question is, how do we get this information into the public arena so an individual can be free in America? Oh, I don't know. Next question. That's what the no. internet's <laughs> about. You know, and that's where that's where uh, you know these presentations come into play. If you go to uh, eMediaPress.com, for example, we have a series of presentations and different books, book book and video presentations that we've been putting out for quite a while. Um, you know, there are other publishing organizations and forums and stuff with their own information. But besides the uh, last year's presentations, these will be available. So, you know, if you go to fourquadranttheory.com when we release Eric's latest talk, that is basically putting it into the public arena where you can go and get it and, you know, experiment with the concepts. And uh, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, not sure how else to answer that other than. Well, it's kind of too general for me, yeah. so you got to be free in your head before you can be free in America. Um, and let's see. Would it be possible to build a solid state circuit, I'm assuming, that pulses with a variable resistor to dial in the frequency? I don't really know what he's saying. Variable resistor to dial in the frequency. Okay. And I can edit this out, so just skip this one and go to the next. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's not, would it be possible to build a solid state I, circuit? I don't know what he's trying to say. Yeah, the first one's the same, right? A lot of these things are kind of jibberable. Okay. Okay, so next question is, uh, does anyone have experience with, in quotes, cold flames? And is there anything you, and is there any useful devices that use it or make it? Uh, not that I know of. Cold flames. I guess just hot. Um, now you've done some uh, like audio flame stuff. That's not related to any of this, or well, it like tries to be interpreted like that, but it's not. It's actually very hot. Very hot. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if that if that's what they're referring to, but that's kind of a general question. Well, that, it's that's... the uh, the cold electricity idea, but they're really isn't anything working in that regard so it's yeah. more of an idea yeah than an actuality right okay uh, let's see does anyone have a recent study does anyone have a recent story of suppression for making a device or giving information real suppression from an organized group not just naysayers yeah greenpeace and my rca book and my rca history they're, they're totally against uh, anything relating to Tesla or Marconi or Alex Anderson. And specifically related and they have, to a They certain... have specifically, when we started to put this stuff out on the internet, they specifically threatened uh, the person that was putting out on the internet and forced him to take it off. 
so it's not a story. Right. So, um, and that kind of leads into uh, uh, here in the near future, um, possibly at the same time as Eric's conference presentation, uh, there is a series of books that go into uh, 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 the wireless transmission um, facility at uh, Bolinas. Right. Where a lot of that stuff happened, right? The whole history unfolded there. And so, and, and one of the books is pretty thick, and it's one that you've compiled, took quite, how many years? Well, it's hard, hard to say, about uh, three to four years. Right. All together. And, and uh, the, other one, the other one written by the historian took him a year to put together. Could you talk about 100% efficient transformers, why we don't make them anymore, and what we might use them for if we did? Uh, I've never known the existence of a transformer to have 100%. Yeah. Because there's always going to be losses no matter what. Well, there's the rotary converter that was on that uh, Borderland video that was greater than 100%. So you could say that's a transformer. Yeah. But uh, in, in the most general sense, I think here they're right. talking about a winding type of transformer. It's no... Transformers actually become much more efficient than they used to because of the better core material. Mm -hmm. So it's smaller now. Right. So I, I, I don't know what to make of that. Okay. But in any case, transformers are getting more efficient. Yeah. Smaller. And more compact. More yeah. compact. Yeah. Because I know that when we're driving around and you're looking up at the power things, you're noticing these transformers yeah, they're much are smaller. Yeah, much they smaller. Don't, they don't so. need as much cooling as they used to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Is there some way, either from what we've heard this weekend or beyond, to take an electric car and make it capable of going indefinitely with another charge from standard sources. No, not any way that I know of. And, uh, so what's, um, you know, on that topic, what's your opinion of the story about the Tesla car, that, that Pierce Arrow, that electric car that just... It's a story. And not much documentation about I, what I haven't what this, really run across anything about that. Yeah, in Tesla's own writings. Right. If, if it's uh, if somebody can find it, I mean that'd be one thing. But I have I've never run across it. Right. Uh, I think uh, a lot of that stuff was pandered by the Tesla uh, disinformant Arthur Matthews. Uh -huh. He was one of the principal uh, Tesla disinformers in the beginning of all this. Just get people on the wrong track yeah. and waste yeah. a lot and of then, time. Then and Tom Bearden was the next one. And there's some other guy, I think his name is Schwartz or something, I forget right off. He's a, uh, another Tesla disinformer. Uh -huh. So there's, there's a pretty solid group of Tesla disinformation out there. And most of the stuff that you think you know about Tesla, you don't. It's really these guys' stories. Right. And they weave them in with the truth, and then nobody knows the difference anymore. Right. Because you find enough evidence of the true things, and you assume, yeah, well, it's all so, the... But that's not to say that yeah. Tesla didn't make something like that. But, right. But, you know, that's not to say that Tesla didn't do anything. Right. You so, just haven't had your so hands on the evidence. Ends, you know, yeah. you can, uh, that's the problem. You can right. just make up any story you want about Tesla, because he's an enigma, so that makes him available for everybody's fish story. Right. A lot of mysticism. Yeah. And stuff. Uh, let's see. Which new energy technologies seem closest to being sold and accepted by the mainstream? I have no idea. Yeah, yeah I see a lot of claims in the articles and the different sites and stuff. I but, just ignore uh, all of it. Well, it seems the same story. There's a big press release and something's supposed to be launched and then a couple weeks later yeah. disappears. And Let's see, his other question. Uh, what technologies and inventors in new energy are most exciting to you right now? None. That you know of. <laughs> None. Nobody. Uh, let's see. Talking about a specific circuitry, but no reference to which one. Uh, let's see. I didn't show any circuits. Yeah, it might have been a reference to something else yeah. at the conference. Okay, for Eric, not a question, just a comment. I only stumbled upon your work about a year ago, heartbroken over what you were forced to endure, delighted to see you well. I hope anyone, everyone in attendance here makes it their resolve to assist you in your work uh, in whatever way they can. You're a gift to us all and an inspiration to persevere. So just a comment from a fan there. Yeah, that's good. Um, uh, let's see. Here's a... Uh, 
paper, which I'm not going to get into here, but this is written up by Mark McKay. Uh, Mark McKay is a uh, uh, very talented uh, engineer who was a speaker at last year's conference. Um, he's gone probably more into the uh, so-called Ed Gray technology, which was really developed by Marvin Cole. Um, flown around, met his family. Uh, that video is available from last year. And this year we invited him as a guest um, to kind of hang out because he's been working on, uh, been a fan of Eric Dollard's for uh, a long time and has uh, worked on some experiments and one that he was uh, uh, trying to get going and it, and it just didn't quite tune up right and everything. He actually brought it out to the conference and Eric had a chance to, to, to look over it and they did some adjustments and, and, and got it working. Um, do you want to kind of explain a little bit about what, what that whole experiment is? Well, the thing what we were after was duplicating uh, uh, Tesla's idea of radiant matter. Okay. And we achieved that. Right. And uh, one of the, the outstanding effects is charging a capacitor uh, through free space without, to DC without any wire connection. Right. Not even one wire, but no wire. Well, there's one wire to ground. Yeah. But uh, to get one pole has to be earth, but the other end is capable of receiving the electricity when it becomes uh, immersed in the sheath of radiant matter. That's what we determine. Right. So there's a sheath of radiant matter that extends a certain distance. And if the uh, if I put my hand in there and it was shown in, if we ever videoed it, uh, I charge my body with what radiant matter I accumulate out of my hands to a potential of about 5,000 volts. Right. So it's all still very experimental and exploratory right. and right. a lot of development. Uh, the other aspects uh, of why I originally built that weren't demonstrated in that it transmitted electricity from one transformer to the other. Mm -hmm. But we weren't interested in that. The main focus was on getting that uh, the radiant matter thing going. Mm -hmm. And so the capacitor was basically held up to a light bulb in between these two antenna yeah. coils. Yeah, the light bulb and was in, <clears throat> in the transmission path between the two coils. And then uh, inductance was inserted there to back up the EMF uh, to the point where the light bulb had a, uh, a high potential writing on top of it mm -hmm. with respect to uh, its own internal filament voltage drop and earth, right. probably about maybe several thousand volts, right. but uh, Tesla impulses, it right. wasn't uh, just alternating current. Mm -hmm. So once we got the thing that produced the impulses, then we got the radiant matter effect. So it was quite satisfying to have all that work out and everybody could right. actually put their hands on it and feel it. Feel the little yeah, buzzing the, or yeah, it's pressure. Like a pressure or in your yeah, hands, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and some of the sparks from the capacitors, you know, at that at least a couple of them over five thousand volts. Yeah, some I think I was as high as maybe eight or ten thousand volts. Yeah. Some of them. Right. Just by holding up to the light bulb, charges yeah. up and right. <laughs> And so, um, so we we went through everything. It wasn't gas in the bulb; it was a vacuum bulb. It wouldn't do it with the filament turned off, so it was definitely thermionic, and uh, it had to be the thermionic particles. But the Tesla impulses projected them through the glass, just like Tesla said it would. And you could feel them and charge a capacitor off of them. Right. And it would charge up material objects and pull them towards the bulb. It right. Showed that too. And it showed off the bingo machine. <laughs> well, that was the transmission side because. Uh, you know, the thing wasn't totally symmetrical and it wasn't totally isolated, so right. all electronic devices in the building took a squat. Right. Yeah, they're in the middle of a bingo game in the other room at this uh, facility in the middle of one of the demos. The bingo, the bingo game went off. <laughs> the bingo board. So, uh, so this paper by Mark McKay just kind of details, you know, a little bit of the history, some of the pictures of yeah, this. Yeah, some, uh, some of the history in there of, of uh -huh. how it got moved around and all that's not quite accurate. We have to correct that later, so. But, but, but it'll the have... The technical part's okay. Yeah, some of the, the diagram of the, uh, there's the antenna. A, there's a few things left out in the diagram. I think he's going to probably have to redo that okay. a little bit. So uh, so when this is ready, we'll, this will be available. Um, this will be available in one of the forums or on a YouTube video or something like that. Uh, so an actual experiment that you can actually build because it'll have all the parts, uh, the specs, and everything put it together, so you can try to try to replicate this and uh, and learn about that concept. Um, I don't know anything else to go over. Or? Yeah, it'll be pretty hard to replicate because you have to have that uh, pulse source, which in this case is that diathermy oscillator, which are pretty hard hard to find in good shape. Yeah, you know, otherwise, you know, a whole uh, radar pulse modulator has to be assembled from scratch. Which you said is actually going to be better than that one because it's... 
doesn't have all the noise. Yeah, and... yeah, that's really the way to go. So this was just kind of, this was a reenactment of the way that I did it. Right. Uh, mine I kind of operated a little better because I had calculated everything and it all tuned up and by some strange miracle I didn't have to tune anything. The capacitors just were all the right size. On the original The original demo. one that I built to show in, in Colorado, that video got suppressed also. And that uh, was that. I have a rough copy of it uh, that I've been trying to get out, but unfortunately nobody's interested in it in helping me do it. Mm -hmm. That was uh, for the Psycho U.S. Psychotronics Association. Right. They will not uh, allow anyone to see that video. And that was that in 1989. Uh, that was the Borderland I did afterwards because I wasn't going to allow myself to be suppressed. Yeah. So a large quantity of money was uh, uh, was uh, given to me to set up this laboratory. Uh, with all its inventory, which of course was all lost, mm -hmm. and then of course I had to glean the entirety of LA to get all those parts, so now none of them are available, and the people that I got them from are all dead. Mm -hmm. So that's a serious complication. This really, when when something gets destroyed, there's not really much of a way I can put it back together again, right? So I would, I think it, uh, the Golden Colorado Psychotronics thing was probably. 86 maybe mm -hmm. something like that right. and then that uh, that led to enough support to put the thing together the same equipment but to set it up in the borderland video right. and uh, my, my, I wanted to get that all thoroughly documented so Peter Lindemann and Tom Brown and myself and uh, my friend David Franklin and uh, I think uh, Chris Carson all worked to uh, a lot of work went on behind the scenes to get that all set up and then the intent was to uh, to make an undisputable video and also to make a mockery out of the people uh, that wouldn't like it because none of this stuff's ever going to be accepted so why be nice there wasn't any point in being nice so you can see our beer bottles in the background and the whole deal right. so <laughs> right <laughs> but uh, but the thing is is uh, no one else has ever been able to do that mm -hmm. uh, so mark got to the step now that he's a somebody else that did it right how many years later Quite a few. 23? Yeah, 23 some. years later. Yeah, yeah. So that's why my beard's not black anymore like it is in the video. <laughs> right. So the, uh, you know, out of everything, if there's one experiment that you would recommend the beginner to start experimenting with... What, I put what all it? kinds of stuff out yeah. on the Energetic Forum. The Somehow crystal radio... It, the... it just has to be compiled in right. a way that people can get to it. And uh, So the, the crystal radio initiative right. uh, was to use a Tesla transformer as a crystal radio receiver uh, which of course requires no power, it powers itself off the AM transmitter and then the thing was to optimize that and light a light bulb off the AM transmitter. Uh, the other thing was the cosmic ray detector uh, to ascertain uh, uh, the nature of the Tesla rays that Tesla talks about using you know existing parts and technologies and and it would also work like a Geiger counter, mm -hmm. ring a phone bell every time uh, there was a radiation hit. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, people just don't seem interested in that stuff and never went anywhere with it, but it's all there. Mm -hmm. Now, didn't John Polakowski put his replication of that? Well, he's work he was working on the magnetic amplifier. That was the okay. most important thing of all because that deals with uh, you know the energy synthesis or desynthesis. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then he decided he wanted to build his own cosmic induction generator, so unfortunately that distracted the whole project. Mm -hmm. So he's involved in that now. Mm -hmm. But that's something I already did. Mm -hmm. uh, the magnetic amplifier stuff I haven't, other than one uh, childhood mishap uh, when I was in high school in my laboratory with a three-phase transformer operating on single phase, went into some kind of uh, parametric oscillation and would burn up all the uh, wiring in the power supply mm -hmm. and catch, the transformer would catch on fire. Right. It wasn't desirable. Later on I, I, I finally realized what was going on. Nobody at RCA knew. Mm -hmm. So and then Steinmetz um, has a couple of chapters in his AC book about this stuff that uh, fascinating uh, experimental possibilities. So that all got compiled into something I put on the energetic form called the Law of Electromagnetic Induction. I probably learned more from it than anybody will that read it. Mm -hmm. So that is a good way to get an understanding of all that. And then uh, all the, the, uh, 
the stuff that people are talking about with, you know, their capture the back EMF and all that kind of malarkey is, uh, is I wrote something called the, uh, I forget, like, four quadrant, uh, I forget what it is now. The magnetic energy exchange. The four quadrant energy exchanges and right. magnetic and dielectric, uh, those are all singled out on that gestalt reality. Mm -hmm. So the four papers uh, of prominence uh, that I wrote in that interval, all on, on uh, whatever you call it that he's got it on. Right. And, and little by little over time, um, a lot of these papers are... See, at Energetic Forum, everything is all rolled into one discussion, so it's kind of hard to go through and sort through to find, you know, what, what posts go to what topic. And so little by little, those are all going to be cataloged and indexed, and each paper will be its own discussion, and those will be put into energysciencesforum.com and the Eric Dollard uh, Forum. So it'll be a whole forum dedicated to Eric's work, which each discussion topic will be on one specific paper, so it doesn't get all mixed around. You know, the, the conversation stays on topic for that particular topic. So it'll be easier to read, easier to understand and learn from. Uh, and you don't have to scan through hundreds or thousands of posts. And uh, so one thing I want to mention is with uh, Eric's presentation coming out on 4quadranttheory.com, is that, for example, when uh, you know when I'm launching these presentations, uh, it is actually through an affiliate program through ClickBank, and uh, we offer 60% referral commission to anybody who wants to refer a sell. But what we've done is we've set up a uh, an affiliate link specifically for Eric, and instead of being an affiliate yourself and earning the commission, um, I'm going to be making that link available to everybody who wants to support Eric's work. So you, if you have a website or a forum or any kind of YouTube channel and you want to highlight Eric's work and, and support him in that way, utilize that link and each time somebody clicks on that link and gets a copy of Eric's presentation, 60% uh, will be going towards Eric's work. And uh, yeah, that's a nice, simple, free, easy way to uh, uh, support what he's doing so Eric can continue to work on uh, his experiments uh, at his lab and uh, continue to release more information. So, I guess yeah, that's kind of an important thing because uh, the amount of money it took to get the building and all that type of stuff was so hideous that there's really no money to do anything with it. Right. And uh, and there's still a lot of lot of things to be done yet to even get it to the point where I could do something with it. So I don't know how that's going to work out. Right. So, um, and if you want to know when uh, Eric's presentation is coming out, you can, uh, you know, either through Ener uh, energeticforum.com or energysciencesforum.com, uh, or you can even go to uh, emediapress.com where we'll have a catalog of all the presentations. There is a newsletter sign up there called Energy Times. If you sign up on that, it'll be announced on that. Uh, I'm sure on uh, ericdollar.com, which well, that forwards to etherforce.com now. Yeah, that's not that's not really a direct output for me. So yeah, that's more of so an auxiliary thing. So right. So so they may they may announce it there. And so anyway, um, thanks for listening. And you know, if you have any questions, there's always the forum that you can go uh, post those in. And when Eric gets a chance, he looks through those and uh, there'll be an answer. Yeah. Plus, so, there's uh, other people there too that are uh, you know aware of it now, where they can right. answer the question without me even seeing it. Right. So I, I, I became less inclined to be involved in the energetic forum because I put a lot of material out there and there was just not enough interest or activity to really keep doing it. But, yeah. but if it becomes of more interest and more activity, then I'm more interested in being involved with it. But, but living in the bushes, you have to remember that emails and Facebooks and none of those things have any relevance. In so anyway, we'll go ahead and wrap it up there. Thanks for listening and uh, stay tuned for 4quadranttheory.com. Thank you very much. which was uh, extremely successful. I mean, we just heard so many rave reviews about, you know, literally every single speaker. Uh, everybody was in love with the topics. Uh, there was a lot of conversations, uh, a lot of good social networking time, you know, in between the break time and after the conference was over on all three days. And so um, as part of the agenda on the last day before Eric's talk, there was going to be a uh, discussion panel uh, with all the speakers moderated by Jean Manning, who is the author of Breakthrough Power. And uh, we'll give links to her website so you can follow up on her blog and, and see some of the articles and some of the work she's involved in. 
And so, with the schedule that we had, we were kind of we we're kind of slammed, and uh, so we weren't able to do the discussion panel at the conference. So what I what I'm doing is collecting the questions from different people directed generally to any of the speakers, and some of the questions are directed uh, directly to Eric. And so what I'm going to do is uh, take time to uh, uh, get these questions answered and interview each of the speakers um, if they happen to be here in the local area, you know, at least for the moment. And the ones who are going to be out of town, such as Jim Murray, I'll have to do something probably over the phone. And so you can look for uh, follow-up interviews with the other uh, uh, speakers of the conference, like Jim Murray, uh, Peter Lindemann, um, Paul Babcock, and, and so forth uh, later. And they'll all be in the series on uh, either YouTube or somewhere, but I'll make the links available. Um, so, first of all, um, do you have any comments or anything that you want to talk about uh, as far as the conferences involved in, in your lecture, which was... Uh, well, you probably should point out, uh, you know, you brought up the thing about the book. You probably should explain that, you know, okay. it was a hurried effort and, uh, yeah. and you, like you did on the previous tape. Okay. So, with, um, with, with Eric's talk, um, uh, the title of the talk was the... Uh, uh, symbolic representation of electricity or the four, four quadrant uh, representation of electricity based on Eric's four quadrant theory that if you've been following Eric's work you know about his four quadrant theory but um, chances are you may not know what it means or may not understand it. Um, There's some old books or uh, papers written uh, back in the uh, Borderland days which was kind of intended for you know PhDs and people who have uh, you know pretty advanced understanding in electrical engineering anyway and so um, when we're putting together this conference and uh, Eric was invited to be uh, one of the speakers, um, kind of had a brainstorm to, um, well actually an energetic forum, we kind of took a survey to see what most people wanted to learn about and it was the, the, the four quadrant theory. And before the conference there wasn't really like a layman's guide or something that kind of followed through all the history on, you know, the, the path that Eric took mathematically to to arrive at his four quadrant theory and so the purpose of this talk was to kind of bridge the gap between the layman and and his theory even though it, it the intent was to get a little bit heavy into the mathematics towards the end but start with uh, a very metaphysical background you know starting with Pythagoras and looking at the history of mathematics and how it all kind of ties in and uh, so Eric didn't have a whole lot of time to be able to pr prepare uh, his whole presentation how he wanted um, the, pr the presentation on the slideshow presentation was about two hours, it was about half an hour of questions that followed up, but throughout the process of Eric putting together that presentation, he had uh, written l literally about 500 pages of notes to be able to This is Aaron Murakami with the uh, uh, Bedini Lindemann 2013 conference. Uh, basically, I was the primary coordinator for the uh, for the event up in Hayden, Idaho, which we just had this weekend. And we had a handful of speakers. And uh, sitting with me here is the uh, legendary Eric Dollard, who was uh, kind enough to come up, and he gave a, a two-hour presentation at the end, which followed up with about a half an hour of uh, uh, questions. And uh, and so. Um, as many of you know who's been following Eric's work, there's a, a whole compendium of, uh, you know, articles and research papers and schematics, you know, how-to stuff, theory stuff that Eric has been sharing and uh, people like David Webster and John Polakowski has been uh, 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 helpful by kind of organizing that and typing it up on the forum so everybody can read that. And uh, if you want to follow and learn more about Eric's work, there are three different fr uh, threads at energeticforum.com. Uh, there's one called Whatever Happened to Eric Dollard. The second thread is Eric P. Dollard. And then the third thread is Eric Dollard. Um, they all kind of go in sequence. The reason there's three threads is there was a few issues with a couple of them, so I had to lock them just to kind of preserve them so none of the information disappeared. And so right now there is an Eric Dollard thread, and that is live and active. Uh, Eric still participates in that and uh, little by little um, a lot of the work is going to be compiled and organized under energyscienceforuncom um, At the conference this weekend and Hay to compile that talk and still wasn't able to get all the information into the presentation he wanted so 
So there was uh, a good handful of slides going into the math and stuff that he was he had to skip over just because of the time, uh, the time limit that we had to work with. And so um, besides the video presentation, there will be a book uh, coming out in the near future when Eric has time to uh, uh, to go back down south and uh, work on his book. That may take a couple months to compile it, and that will be a companion book to the video presentation. So you have the full, well-rounded. Um, uh, presentation along with the math and deeper explanations on it so if you missed anything in the presentation or didn't understand it uh, Eric will have gone in, into pretty complete detail in the book so that will be coming out and uh, when Eric's uh, four quadrant um, theory presentation that he had at the conference comes out it will be available at fourquadranttheory.com uh, four is spelled out f-o-u-r quadranttheory.com uh, not only will the video presentation be there first, but when the book is available, it'll be on that same website. And so, um, besides that, should I just go into a few of the questions yeah. and stuff? And I didn't really have time to look over all these questions, so I'll just uh, go ahead and read them out, and Eric can just uh, go ahead and answer. Um, let's see. Okay, here's one. This is basically j directed to everyone, so I'll be, I'll be asking all the speakers uh, this particular question. So, uh, and I don't know who these came from, they didn't write, write their names, but the first question is, how do we get this information into the public arena so an individual can be free in America? Oh, I don't know. Next question. That's what the no. internet's <laughs> about. You know, and that's where, that's where uh, you know, these presentations come into play. If you go to uh, emediapress.com, for example, we have a series of presentations and different books Book, book and video presentations that we've been putting out for quite a while. Um, you know, there are other publishing organizations and forums and stuff with their own information. But besides the uh, last year's presentations, these will be available. So, you know, if you go to fourquadranttheory.com when we release Eric's latest talk, that is basically putting it into the public arena where you can go and get it and, you know, experiment with the concepts. And uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Not sure how else to answer that other than well, it's kind of too general for me. Yeah, so you got to be free in your head before you can be free in America. Oh, okay. And let's see, would it be possible to build a solid state circuit? I'm assuming that pulses with a variable resistor to dial in the frequency. Well, I don't really know what he's saying. Variable resistor to dial in the frequency. Okay, and I can edit this out, so just skip this one and go to the next. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's not. Would it be possible to build a solid state I, circuit? I don't know what that he's trying to say. Yeah, the first one's the same, right? A lot of these things are kind of kind of trivial. Okay. Okay. So next question is: uh, Does anyone have experience with, in quotes, cold flames? And is there anything you? And is there any useful devices that use it or make it? Uh, not that I know of. Cold flames. I guess just hot. Um, now you've done 